they stand out by being the first right out the gate, right? That's <laughs> there's that. Um, you know, going beyond that and looking at what the solution is, I think that it's it's uh, the, the mobile side, the the need to the need for companies to look at a more integrated mobile approach um, is is growing and coming into more into focus for a lot of companies where they need they need the sadly they need the always on always able to be reached uh capabilities of with their work profile that they that are maybe not always as accessible outside of having a mobile solution in place the need for this mobile component is what has come immediately into focus uh for, for a lot of companies and, and why this need has bubbled to the surface for microsoft as they developed uh the solution and brought verizon to the to the table uh to, to be the first there so we're talking about teams phone mobile and what on the verizon network what that lets you do is have you know a single phone number that's now converged between your team's client and your mobile phone so before this existed you had to have two numbers you had to have one on you had a pstn number a publicly switched telephone number on your team's desktop and your your client and then you also had your mobile so you had you were carrying around two different phone numbers so now we're talking about one phone number uh, on the Verizon network. So you, you take your Verizon number and you make that your team's number. And it's also rings you yep. on, on your mobile. And people say, well, wait, that that's just the team's mobile client. will just do that. I'll just single number reach or sim ring me on both. But yeah, but you still had two phone numbers to deal with. So this is quite groundbreaking in a way, because now you're talking about the savings of, of a DID. And, the and in a large enterprise, that, that yeah. could be significant. Well, it also goes back to what we were talking about earlier of, of customers who are coming and saying, well, can I just use mobile devices? Well, yes, but you also get the benefit of that mobile device is now attached to a corporate phone system. So you can do all the things that a corporate phone system can do. But like Dino just explained, you have a single device, single phone number. And for, well, you don't have to have a single device. You have a single phone number. That's really the important part. But that single phone number now stretches across your mobile device your PC, whatever other devices that you may have that, that you sign in with. So obviously the first and foremost is like BYOD, like so organizations struggling today with, do I need to supply a corporately owned uh, device or do we handle the BYOD and let people come in? And of course, if we do that, you know, now we're providing a, a phone number we have a thousand or ten thousand user org. Now we have ten thousand mobile phones. We need to worry about ten thousand new phone numbers. So we're managing twenty thousand numbers, you know. And then if they're user devices, well, like, that's a whole different thing they need to worry about. Like, how do we onboard these devices and make them work seamlessly with Teams? So these are the sorts of questions that you're hearing from business leaders, and they have they're not sure where to go. Yeah, I would jump in on that and just kind of echo a few things. But what's interesting is, is I talk to as when I go out and I talk to organizations that are looking to move and they start talking about, hey, we're on system X, Y, Z, doesn't matter. Um, and we're looking at where do we go from here? One of the things I hear commonly is, is can we just go to cell phones? Can we just go to mobile devices? Do we need a phone system altogether? And that's the bigger challenge is, is that that everybody has become so dependent on their mobile phones, good, bad, and different. Uh, we can, that's a whole nother conversation for another set of drinks. Corporations, organizations still need a centralized phone system. Like whenever I talk to these customers, I'm like, well, how's Bob going to transfer to Sally, you know, from mobile? Is it literally going to be, I'm going to call and then, you know, three-way call in and then drop. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way from a business perspective. Customers will not be okay with that. And so to get them to understand that, and then it becomes an even different component of, like Dino said, of devices. Do we own the devices? Do we own the DIDs? If you're asking for BYOD and then, hey, I'm just going to let, you know, Bob use his mobile number as it, well, what happens when Bob leaves the company? You have no, you no longer own that number. And so all your customers who are calling Bob keep calling Bob, but they're no longer calling you. And so there's a lot that goes into that uh, when we think about from a mobile perspective. And there are decisions to be made there by the company, you know, that as you're wading into it, because you've got user preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of end users that are getting more and more voting power in terms of what they will or won't do, what their technology will or won't look like. I don't, I'm not going to carry two mobile phones around. You're not going to make me carry two mobile phones around. I'm just not going to do it. 
but no, I don't want you controlling my mobile device and getting into my call log and doing, I don't want, I don't want that either. And so striking the balance um, in terms of where that, who owns what, where the controls actually lie, what those policies are going to be and under, making uh, end users, employees understand this is what's in place and why it needs to be in place. There's a journey there. Um, and certainly it is, there is no easy button to it. It is it is going to be a lot of decisions, a lot of talking through, and a lot of planning. But when Josh you mentioned that of the carry, not wanting to carry two phones, I know that that's pretty commonplace outside of the U.S. It's super common um, from that perspective, especially over in Europe. The the idea though, what happens when, especially here in the U.S., we don't really we don't we don't have good boundaries. We all work the, all the time. Um, let's just be honest. But as we start to see more and more people have the, you know, the that concept of the right to be off, to not have to work, and to not be contacted when you're off work, comes more and more about what happens at that point. Um, the the devices aren't smart enough today to to just turn off and allow you to still use your email for your personal, but shut off your work email. And so there's a lot of stuff that comes into play there from a mobile perspective. The fact that if the internet's down, you're not getting calls. So when you're, if, but if, if the Verizon network's up and running, then that inbound call is still going to ring your mobile phone, mm -hmm. irrespective of what Microsoft Teams is doing. If there's an outage on Teams, normally that means no one's getting phone calls. But with Teams phone mobile and Verizon, you're going to, that inbound call is still going to complete as long as the mobile phone network's up and running. Yep. Yeah. So there's a resiliency oh, yeah. aspect to it as well. And that, that's exactly where I was going with it. it you know, it's it's a you know, with what I was going to say there is that you I've had a lot of projects in the past where the redundancy was was either a stopping point in the discussion or just a glaring, a glaring uncomfortable point that was going <laughs> to follow into the life of the life of the use of the solution is that uh, if we're down, if we're totally down from a VoIP perspective, well, that's just going to be a bummer. A lot of, at at that point you'd bring up the fact that, well, you, you know, you've got your team's client on the mobile phone and yeah, if the, if team service is down then the team's part is dead, but you still got the phone that can kind of be your backup. It really wasn't a very lovely part of the conversation that it wasn't looked at as a great answer to redundancy or backup. This brings it a little more into the natural. Yes, this is a part of the team's solution. This can be looked at as our redundancy in those scenarios where everything is just down. Well, there is something to be said, I think, to that point you just made. I mean, it is important, too. If you lose visuals but still have audio, it can still proceed. You yeah. People are still connected. Mm -hmm. The conversation happens. It is a, it's a more fundamental part of a collaboration, having the voice be able to communicate. Uh, if you have no sound but we can see each other, the meeting ends. <laughs> yeah. We, we can put culture on hold until the power comes back on. Right. and just communicate via audio. Yeah, following the pandemic, there were a lot of organizations that thought they had a good handle on how things had changed forever. And a few years beyond that, we see that we're still getting a grasp on what that change really means and, and how those workers are going to be in the office or not in the office. And as they develop a lot of these new patterns, that often translates to a lot of different tools that they prefer to use for managing their time, staying organized, communicating with people. Uh, and that extends across meeting applications, telephony, uh, and a lot of that lives mobily as well. So mobile solutions start to come into focus there. I think one one thing that's interesting is that it, it is part of the change that's happened is that it's not, there's not just one way of working. I would agree on that, of that more and more companies are truly trying to figure out how do they keep an edge um, in, in today's modern work environment. I don't know how else to say that, but I think when you look at it and everybody's approaching it slightly differently, you have some folks who are saying, hey, we'll go full remote and we're just gonna find the best of the best wherever they may be at. You have other companies that are saying, we're just gonna be flexible and we're gonna have some folks who are gonna be hybrid or whatever, so, you know, some in office, some not. And then there's the other organizations that have figured out that in order for them to grow and be prosperous, they need to return to the office. There's a lot of great reasons for, for that. And so finding and meeting those needs today um, is really what, what 
you see is doing is it's helping bring that. So whether you're in the office and you're messaging three cubes down or whether you're half a country away, doesn't really matter. It, it's removing barriers for communication and that's the real goal.